And uh, what are the limits and the timeline on such a thing as the, the Treasury Act? And I'm going to go from left to right this time. Well, actually, I'm just going to put this towards Bill because he probably knows about it, and then we're going to go over here from there. Uh, my understanding is that Treasure Map uh, is a fairly recent program uh, uh, before uh, 2013, of course, and that they were only capable of doing a few tens of millions of people simultaneously now at that time. Uh, so given the rate of progress, you would expect that uh, they should be at several hundred million, maybe a billion by now, and their objective is four billion. And it's really a pretty simple thing. It's a matter of indexing data against uh, attributes of uh, devices, which then map to people. And so uh, you know, you know, uh, you can you can then uh, compile and index all of the uh, GPS from your cell phones or any location from cell towers or positions in the net net that you access points, um, things like that. You can all index that just to the attributes of the device, which in turn maps to the person. Okay, and if you accumulate that over time, then I can say from this time to this time to map out where this person has been. Right? And in fact, I can look at it and say, okay, this person is in this room at this time. Give me everybody else in this room. So then I draw a little uh, radius of maybe 100, 200 feet and say, give me the location, anybody in this location in this GPS database. Uh, plus, uh, the other aspect of it that I saw anyway was that uh, you can use then the location of everybody, these four billion people uh, in the world, to start to make things like face recognition workable. The way you do that is very simply saying, okay, um, I know you're at this location at this time, here, this time, here, this, and here, this, and here, and how many of those locations do we have video at that time? So then if I pull out, say, three locations with video, then I would say within uh, you know, a couple of feet at this point, that's where you are in all these videos. Who, what, what face is in common in all those videos at that time? Because if you try to use face recognition, like for example, uh, they try to recognize my face in the city of Minneapolis. How many people live in Minneapolis? Right? You know, however many that is, a million maybe? Three million? Three, four, I promise. Okay, if I try to recognize my face out of three million, the algorithm will say uh, there's a certain probability of this match being correct. And so it'll come up with maybe uh, five to 10,000 matches potentially, with probabilities ranging fairly closely of matching. Well, if I can norm uh, you know, reduce that down to a few feet, then the reliability of face matching becomes very uh, positive and very reliable. Then I then have your face and I put it in as your ID and that maps then to you and that device so that I can use that as uh, facial recognition anywhere in the world. So that's another benefit from doing that kind of thing. I'm sure that's what they're trying to do. 